90% of the games you guys play in ranked play, if you just do this, you should win a majority of your 1v1s, 2v2s. Winning S&D really requires one thing. Clutch up your defenses, because defenses win championships. Always need to understand that there are three lanes and a 50 yard line. And with this 50 yard line, the enemies only have a few spots that they can go, right? And I already drew them. So one guy can hop up right here, one guy can hop through the window, one guy could go bottom middle, one guy can hit tunnel, and then one guy can hit outer lane. That's it. For defense, your job is to make sure that these enemies don't hit these spots. And you are on defense, all you really have to do is have one player in this lane, one player in this lane, and then one player over here in this lane. These enemies can't get behind us, and more in particular, they just can't get to B, right? They try to rush up right here, boom, they run into number one, they're dead. They try to rush bottom middle, boom, they run into two, they're dead. Even if they hop up top middle, if they try to run right here, boom, they're dead to number three. If they hit back alley, boom, they're dead. And even if they try to hop out of the windows, they're running into number two. Now, obviously, this is just us defending B, but all I'm trying to prove to you guys right now is if you guys just sit in this lane and hold these lanes, the enemies have a few spots that they can hit and it's right in front of you. And all you got to do is hold a pre-aim and wait for them to push. Now, obviously, when you guys are playing ranked play, you guys are going to have a fourth player. And this fourth player, normally you would put him wherever we need more uh, cover, right? Uh, so... You know, if the players love hitting tunnel, we could have this player go over here and help tunnel. But I'm sure you guys understand that most players, they try to hop up top middle and go towards A. So we would put this fourth player up towards A and over here to get a better hold. And this is exactly that hold that we're talking about, where this player could throw down a trophy system and now he can hold this entire hop up right here this player's holding this entire back alley, this player's holding middle, and then this player's holding the right lane. With this positioning right here, it is nearly impossible for these enemies to get past this 50 yard line and get into our base. As simple as S&D can be. It's defense wins championships, you have players sit in these spots, and as long as you wait for these guys to push you, you will win the gunfights. Let's say we're playing trios. This is where you might have different setups, right? Where you hold the lanes differently. Uh, where maybe this one player, he doesn't push up because he doesn't feel comfortable with this, and instead he plays a little bit further back, right? And he's still holding tunnel. It's just now he's in a different spot. This player right here, maybe he doesn't like sitting out in the open and holding bottom middle. He just doesn't feel comfortable. So we just put him back here or back here, somewhere over here. And now he can still hold middle from a different position. And then uh, this player over here, if he doesn't feel comfortable at all, he can obviously back up. And uh, that's how like we would do a trio setup, right? Um, but let's again talk about another trio setup that you guys can do. Because again, all that matters is as long as you're holding these three lanes, you guys are totally fine. So a different trio setup that you could do is let's say we played it a little bit more aggressive where we have two players over here. So one player watching the hop up, one player watching this lane over here, and then our third player over here, he could literally just sit back here and once again, He's holding all of tunnel and he's holding all of bottom middle. Done. So you guys can have fun with this. You guys can create your strats, create your setups. Just make sure you're always holding these three lanes. Um, and another spot you could have this player is this player could actually go top middle and then sit in fire. And when he's sitting in top fire of P1, he can literally look out the window. And when he's looking out the window, he's still doing the exact same thing. He's making sure these enemies don't push bottom middle towards B. He's making sure they don't push tunnel towards B. And if they do try to push towards tunnel or anything, our player's going to catch them. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit dangerous about this is these enemies could go bottom middle and then they can go top middle up these stairs and then they could potentially shoot number one in his side. But ideally, number one would just react to that, get behind cover, and then number two can obviously you know play for that. We have our middle lane and then we have our bottom lane, just like that. 
And then our 50 yard line is a little bit more like this. So our 50 yard line is a little bit more like that. And it's the exact same thing. This team is on defense. All we need to do is have one player in the left lane, one player in the middle lane, and then one player in the right lane. Boom. Done. And then because it's defense and it's super easy, this player can sit here one round, and then he can sit here the next round, and then he can sit here the next round, and then the next round he could push up. The next round he could do whatever he wants. There's so many spots he can sit and vice versa. This guy could play up here. He could lay down and watch middle cross like this. Um, there's just so many different things you can do. He could also just simply play at A, and they can double up at A, where this guy is literally just watching uh, the middle push the entire time. Right, and again, all I'm showing you is we're holding these three lanes just from different spots. And same thing with this player over here. He could play it far back up here. He could jump up top here. He can play it from top dome. Or he could uh, play it aggressive and he could push up right here or he could push up and like lay down under the scaffolding. Uh, just the point of it is if you have three players, each player holds a lane, you play the game, you win. I would, I would say just make sure you're always tradable and if you're not playing with a teammate, make sure you're safe. So if you're playing B by yourself, make sure that you're playing in a spot where you really you know, can't die because you are very, very important for information. These two players over here, these two guys are playing together, so we can play a little bit aggressive and like we're in a room to trade, right? Now, this is the scenario that I was talking about where like this player probably pushes up, starts planning, this player pushes up towards clock tower, and then this player is just like camping top third, right? Uh, something like that. Uh, so when this player calls out all this information, this guy, all he needs to do is just don't die. Literally, that is your job. If the enemies went B, don't die, and just make sure they don't push up in your lane anymore. And that's where these two players come into play. All these two players have to do, and this is going to be for every 3v3 you guys play, every 4v4 you guys play, the second that this guy calls out, yo, they're B, these two guys literally just need to go for a full flank. And if we go for a full flank, ideally what happens is maybe this guy was predicting us to flank and he kills one of us, but at least we trade him out. And now we are in a 2v2 and in this 2v2, we can collapse on them from both sides. Now, if you had a, you know, fourth teammate, the fourth teammate, I would say, doesn't have to do the double flank with your teammates over here. Instead, he could work up middle. And the whole point of this is this guy's playing his life, making sure they don't push through B. This guy's playing top middle and trying to be a nuisance to this guy. Just get damage down, get damage down. And while these two guys are being bait and just shooting, these two guys are going for the full flank and killing. Now, literally, all I'm going to do right now is show you guys the exact same thing, but on the opposite side, right? Uh, so let's say that we know that these enemies, they went B, and we don't want them to do that again, so we hard counter them. And the way we hard counter them is we have, you know, one player hold the pre-aim, and then one player pushes up, and then one player, you know, gets up here with an AR. And then this player turns around and then picks up middle, right? Uh, but what happens is when we push up on this right lane, and we don't see these enemies, and we now know that they're going towards A, we're going to want to start to collapse on these enemies, and it's the exact same thing. This guy is playing his life, just making sure these guys don't push up, making sure he doesn't die. This guy can obviously be here to support him, and once again, his job is just don't die, make sure they don't push up, and while these guys are not dying and just getting information, these two guys are pushing up and going for a flank. And because we have two guys here, one guy can hold a pre-aim, while the other guy tries to like rush up and like pinches, right? Or if we're playing 3v3s, literally, you just need to go top third, and now we have these guys trapped. If they try to go A, our teammates over here just throw grenades on them, make sure they don't push through. If they try to rotate back, our teammates top third, and we have them trapped. And that's all really SND is on defense. You fill in the three lanes. And then once the enemy starts pressuring one lane, 
we push up the map and we start collapsing. Once again, uh, the 50 yard line is a little bit more like this kind of, um, but either way, we still have our bottom lane, we still have our middle lane, and then we still have our top lane. And once again, even on this defense, if you have one player playing back over here and he sees these enemies pushing up towards B, the other players, what do they do? One player pushes up, he can start holding this cut, and then these two other players, they're pushing up. Maybe this guy can sit right here, and then this guy pushes all the way through, and then now we have them trapped. Of course, when you're doing this, you can also try to go for hard counters, where like I said, if we know that these guys push B, and we don't want them to you know, have that full map control, we can have our fourth player come over here, and like we can play for a hard counter. Um, and what I mean by that, it's, all right, last time they went B, let's play for a hard counter. So then this guy's pushing up, he's trying to sit in a corner, this guy's pushing up, and now these guys are playing aggressive at B, and they're just trying to, you know, counter them. And these guys over here, they're playing it safe because we're playing these lanes alone. We're playing right lane alone, we're playing middle lane alone. We can't die. So, make sure we're playing it safe. And then once we know that these enemies, you know, aren't playing B anymore, and instead they're trying to go A, that's where now our players, once again, we just start collapsing. This sub player probably pushes through, tries to go for a full flank. This guy pushes up, he's top loft, and now we have all these guys trapped at A. One thing you wanna know on offense is kind of like defense, right? Where do all the enemies play? But on offense, this is where you can try to use mind games. So maybe in the first two rounds of offense, you guys play a spread. So maybe you have a guy all the way back here, you have a guy sitting middle tank, you have a guy sitting inside of um, mannequin or laundry, and you have a guy sitting back tank over here. And like this offense round, we, we don't, we're don't we not trying to go for a win or anything, we're just trying to learn where do these enemies like to sit. And if we learn that these guys always push up, right? So like if this guy says, holy crap, yo, they have one guy on tank and then one guy pushed up into broken, we can sit there and go, there's two players at B, let's all go A. And maybe this player right here says, oh, yo, there's a guy sitting river though. Uh, there's a guy river, so we can't play through river, we can only play through middle. And with that information, we can only play through middle. This guy right here can just say, all right, guys, I'm going to hold the flank. And then these two guys can uh, start working up middle, or sorry, not two. Uh, these three guys can start working up middle. Right. And like we might just like throw a bunch of grenades over here just to make sure this guy is one shot, doesn't push up. And ideally, all three of us can clear out these rooms. We can push out. We can clear out all these corners. And then we might see that the final player is over here. Or maybe this final player camps in a corner. Uh, the whole point of it is when you're on offense, you don't know where these players on defense are sitting. Uh, but you, we know that there's only one player over here in middle. And we can at least play a 3v1 trade. Right. Um, so, like, let's say if he was sitting on tank. You know, this player flies out, gets him one shot. This player flies out, plays the trade. Boom. We now have full map control. This guy says, all right, I'm going to hold our right lane push because there's a guy over here. And this guy says, all right, bet. I'm going to try to um, hold our middle push, right? Because these guys, once we got kills middle, they're trying to collapse. And these guys are either going to go middle and go for a full flank or both of these guys are going to try to push through. Uh, so like this game, this guy may just want to like hold the pre-aim for a second and you might get a free kill. Or maybe you don't, um, but you throw a grenade right here and because you throw that grenade, now you can plant bomb and the entire time all of this is happening, this guy is still sitting here just waiting because we know that there's two players at B, so they are more than likely going to push. And because we know that, this is how number three is going to get a nice easy kill. And then hopefully, you know, we go up in a, you know, 3v2 scenario. This player's trying to, you know, play defense. This player's trying to play defense. And then this player number three can just like push up and go for like a full flank. Um, and that's, that's offense, right? It's, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, but now let's talk about the next offensive round where we now know that because they had a player sitting this middle tank and a player sitting over here. And then uh, last time we said that they went B, right? Like they had two players go B. 
but this time we don't see two players at B. We don't see any players at all in this tank. We don't see any players over here. That means they're probably playing it safe over here at B, and this player, now they're doubled up at A. And because we now know that information, we might just sit there and say, all right, let's all four just go B. Because uh, as you can see, the bomb site's pretty cleared up. And uh, ideally, we would have like three players push up. These three players that push up, one player would hold the middle cut. One player would cross to plant bomb. One player would uh, fight number three, keep him away. And then once we plant bomb, this guy would get into a post plant position. These guys play post plant. And the entire time, this fourth player all the way over here, his job is just to literally watch the full flank. Because once again, if we know this guy says, oh, they're at B, this guy's probably going to be sitting here, and these two guys are probably going to be trying to flank. Right? And while these two guys are trying to flank, maybe number two, you get some good timing, and you pop yourself a two-piece. You guarantee the win. And you get that one kill, and then guess what? Now you can literally just push, go all the way through, and try to flank the other enemies. There's a, a crap ton of other scenarios that can happen as well. And then one last concept that kind of happens in 4v4s, uh, which I'm sure you guys run into this a lot. Uh, but like, let's say we do try to like just send three over here and we know that these players play at B. Like we know they sit a guy on tank and we know they sit a guy in this corner. We could try to play like a 2v2, right? Where these two guys, they're just making sure no one's flanking. This guy's making sure no one's flanking their middle. And these two guys are just trying to play a 2v2, just like it's hard point or whatever, right? And like maybe we double nade this guy, he gets one shot, and then we double challenge and fly at this guy, and we get one kill, but we trade, we get traded out, right? So maybe the trades go out like that. This guy's still alive. And what's going to happen is this guy's going to go, crap, he killed our teammate. Um, I'm one shot. I'm, I, I need help. This guy's going to probably come and try and help. And then this guy's probably going to say, all right, I either need to push through and flank, or he's going to sit there and say, all right, you guys play B, I'm going to play safe and play A by myself. And then when these guys are in a setup like this, this is where like all three of us can just literally 3v1 this guy over here at A. And then when we kill this guy, maybe we get uh, traded out, and now it's a 2v2. These guys are going to go, oh, crap, they're going A. And now this guy may try to push through, and this guy goes middle, or maybe this guy goes back, and then this guy goes middle. Or maybe they both push through. Um, and vice versa for you guys in this 2v2 scenario, uh, you guys can do the exact same thing. You guys can have one player go back over here, one player go right here, or both of you can go through uh, their base. And uh, this is actually where now we're going to transition into um, how to win these 2v2s and 1v1 scenarios. But now for 2v2s and 1v1s, um, it's a little bit more different where I would say you guys can either control your luck or you guys can just try and play Call of Duty timing. Uh, so what I mean by that, it's going back to the scenario, these guys know that we're at A, so chances are one of them will try to like get to this spot and hold A, and then this player over here at B, he can just play defense and look over his teammate the entire time and hold all of B. And like that is something you guys can do on defense. It's literally just say, all right, we're in a 2v2. Uh, let's play together. Let's both play at B. Um, but can you watch A? And literally, he would just be sitting in this uh, alleyway looking at A. And the second that we see these players over here at A, we would just probably both get together. And then when we get together, we can now either go for a full rotation and fight them over here. Or we can go for a full rotation and fight them from their base. On offense, the only thing is with offense, you're kind of forced to, you know, plant the bomb. Uh, so because you're forced to plant the bomb, I would say almost, almost always on offense, a really good play to do is both of you just hold hands and say, all right, they know that we're at A, let's just go B. And uh, when you guys go in a full circle, ideally, you guys can just try to play the trades, play the 2v2s, right? Um, and maybe you guys get some good Call of Duty timing where by the time uh, like you guys are going B, these guys just say, all right, you know what? Let, let's just push through A and flank through A. Maybe these guys are trying to push through A and flank through A. And then by the time you guys are at B, uh, you guys can plant and understand that these guys are more than likely going to try and flank and hit that route. 2s. 
1v1s, if I could just say it as simple as possible, rotate around the map like this, you will guarantee to run into the enemy. If you don't want to do that, then normally on defense, all you need to do on defense is play together and have one player watch one bomb site while the other one watches the other. Uh, like a really good spot for AR players um, is you're going to have one player stand on these sandbags. And this player standing on the sandbags can look all the way out towards B. And then we would have a player sitting back, um, back river right here watching all of A. And like just by doing that, we can once again sit there and go, oh crap, these enemies are trying to plant A right now. I'm going to shoot at them. And while I'm shooting at them, I want you to flank them. Or maybe it's, yo, they didn't see me at all. Just get to me and we're both going to push them out and we're going to both kill them. Now, even in a 1v1, it's literally the exact same thing, except for now you don't have a teammate, you're by yourself, where by myself, I will almost always stand in this spot right here because I can see B and I can see the entire middle cross. And just over time, like let's say, you know, 30 seconds pass and I don't see the enemy at B and I don't see the enemy cross middle at all. I know that he's probably going towards A and then I'll just go flank and kill him at A. And that's what I do on defense. On offense, on offense, I quite literally just go in a full circle until I run into the enemy. And if I don't run into the enemy, then I plant bomb. <laughs> um, and then when I plant bomb, that is where I would say planning bomb and defusing bomb in 1v1 scenarios. Once again, all you need to do is treat the bomb like the middle of a clock and then go in a circle around it. And if you go in a circle around it, I can guarantee you, you will always run into the enemy. Um. Yeah, I, I could just guarantee you that if you are on defense and you hear that the enemy planted B, you can literally like look for him over here and then maybe you throw a grenade over here to cause some nuisance and then you go in a full circle and when you go in a full circle, you're going to shoot him from behind. And because you threw the grenade from this direction, I can guarantee you this enemy will almost always be looking where you threw the grenade and you can shoot him from behind and get that kill. Now, obviously, um, on offense, after you plant the bomb on offense, uh, you could literally just like sit in one spot and just like play for the you know 50-50 gunfight. He's either gonna push you here or he's gonna push you here. You could do that. Um, or you can control your luck, and once you're done planting this, this bomb, push through and start clearing things out. And like I said, you will probably run right into him and kill him. Even if you don't run into him, then you can sit there and be like, huh, do I see him at B? Okay, I don't see him, but I'm gonna go in a full circle. And then when you go in a full circle like this, you might get the Call of Duty timing where you just end up right behind him. And you might kill him right as he's defusing the bomb. If you guys ever plant a bomb over here, run in a circle. I can guarantee you that once you get right here, if you don't see him over here, you can then hop up right here. And if you don't see him middle at all, which I would say at this point, you would see him middle and you would kill him. You would win the round just like that. But if you don't see him at all, then the last possible place he could be is, you know, pushing up from this side and he's about to, you know, defuse the bomb, which you could either go back and try to fight him or you can continue the rotation, end up right here and then shoot and kill him. And as you guys saw, we planted bomb, went in a full circle, boom. And you can also do it the complete opposite way. You plant bomb, and then you say, all right, I'm gonna run this way. Then you go in a big circle, and now you end up behind them. Uh, the only downside to this is sometimes you may accidentally get ninja defused, and if you do this too much, you will get ninja defused. 90% of the games you guys play in ranked play, 90% of the games you guys play um, in you know, checkmate gaming, CMGs, wagers, if you just do this, you should win a majority of your 1v1s, 2v2s. Um, and also, like I said, for that defense, defense is really simple. It's just, you got three lanes, sit in a spot, make sure the enemies can't get through those lanes. But the only question is, uh, what, what about the routes that we should take? Like, right. you don't actually have to like hit a route at all. You can just sit there and be like, all right, let's put a player here, a player here, a player here, and then a player here. And then once you learn, uh, that these enemies love having a player middle tank and then two players at B. You can literally just sit there and be like, oh, all right, 
um, I am always going to literally throw a smoke grenade right here. And I'm just going to rush up. And I'm going to kill the player back here. And once you kill this player right here and he's dead, you can now have full control of A and you can flank the enemies or you can do anything you want. Um, but like the most important thing is you have to know where the enemies are so you can make a route that works. I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but if you did like a rush route, or you kind of just flew in here like it, like it was hard point, yeah, you, you might win. Yeah, you are right. You might win, but it's a 50-50. It's a coin toss, right? There really aren't routes for defense unless your plan was to like hard counter, which a hard counter on Skid Row. So like, let's say we know that these enemies are going to hit tunnel or let's just say that they hit tunnel twice and it worked for them and now we need to hard counter them. One of my favorite routes to do um, is I have one player that sits on this head glitch um, just to get damage down. He could also lay down right here and get damage down. And then while he does this, I, as an SMG, rush up right here and then I fly out and I kill him or I kill the players from tunnel. And like, I would only do that if I know that these players are going tunnel. Right. Because now if I did this and I didn't know that the uh, like if I did this and the enemies didn't go tunnel, we might run into a mistake or an issue where if all four of these enemies are doing a hop up, they now have full control of a. And this is where obviously if they have full control of a we would just talk about those fundamentals where these two players would now just push through and you know play to collapse on these enemies like maybe an ar player would just stay right here and then the submachine gun player would uh push all the way through and try and pinch them where our other two players are like playing it safe on this defense right here they're creating a line making sure that we're all tradable and making sure that we don't overextend and die go ahead and press play and just like that right these two players they said our job is just to make sure they don't push through this player decides to wrap back and we don't want to play for the collapse, and that's okay. okay but well, either way, we're still up. watching our full flank. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, quality is probably really bad, and like all the numbers are blocking it. But the second that this player ran back over here to support at B, our player top dome is still watching middle, just in case they hop up on the ladder. And then this player back here, he's playing it safe just to make sure they don't push up middle or push up towards A. Right now, they're expecting players to like go for a full flank. Number three is holding all of middle. Number one backed up to look for a full flanker. And then number five, he's clearing out middle. He doesn't see anything at A. And at this point, he actually um, understands that these guys are pushing up towards B. Up in a 3v2. And at that point, that's just a GG. They have one right player there. holding the right lane. They have this player actually playing it aggressive and looking for a kill middle because number three, he's playing aggressive and looking for a kill middle. Um, and this goes back to when you guys are playing 4v4, you just put that fourth man uh, where you need the most support, right? Uh, so it looks like Ultra, they said, yo, we want to get control of middle. Um, and then number two, he's uh, actually laying down inside of bus and he can actually sound EQ and hear if any of these guys break open doors or anything. Uh, but as we saw, he's watching this middle cross, um, and he actually kills Boss and Breach right here. Um, so once again, fill in those three lanes, make sure everything's cleared, getting those kills. We're going to see Ultra start collapsing. And now we're up in a 2v2, and well, that's a GG's. We're just going to see them all kind of just run and collapse, which that's all they're doing right there is running and collapsing. Ultra wins a gunfight at A, unfortunately, with a 2-2 spread setup. And right now, Boston, they're just sitting there and saying, well, shit, there's two at A. That means there's only two at B. Let's try to play this 3v2 at B right now. And uh, they're just trying to, like, push it and play it as fast as possible. But as you can see, 4-1, and one, they're just super disciplined. They're literally just holding preams and waiting. And 3 and 2, we're eventually going to see them start pinching. Uh, but honestly, the more we're watching this and watching Pro League, almost no one goes for this back pinch right here. They kind of almost always double up middle. And I would totally agree with that. Uh, you could just have these two players red. And then one player can literally keep fighting top red the entire time, look for the cross on B the entire time. And then the other player, if he wants to go for a flank, he just flanks right here instead of doing a whole route like this. So 
already we learn that whenever you guys are playing defense on Karachi and you do want to go for a flank, play it from middle. Uh, just because this is kind of just taking too much time, right? And that's something that we just learned right here for Karachi. This guy is behind lines. You don't need to move at all. Like in this scenario, by the way, like in a 3v2 scenario like this, number six can literally just sit in this corner the entire round. He could put down his controller, go make some coffee, drink it real quick. And then number seven and eight, all they need to do is just play the uh, 2v2. And the second that these two guys die, Priesta would just say, oh, time to clutch up. He would run upstairs and then he would challenge out. And I would say it is impossible for Ultra to predict him to be here. Um, and I want to point out the reason why this is impossible to predict Priesta to be here is because he's past that 50 yard line. Whenever you let an enemy get past that 50 yard line, oh brother, it's going to be tough. So Number so eight, good. just in a credit corner that they have never used yet. So Capsule will get some crazy timing. And I guess uh, Vulcan, that is like one thing that we can talk about. It's like I've seen almost everyone on defense push up and like lay down under this or they lay down right next to bomb. I see that all the time. That's not going to work for the early rounds in S&D, but it will work in the later rounds because as we can see, Ultra, do not expect this at all. It's a huge problem for Ultra. And uh, at this point, Capsidal just needs to call out to his team. Guys, I have all of B. Don't die. Unfortunately, number six dies. But quite frankly, number seven just needs to sit in a corner, hold his pre-aim. Number five needs to sit in a corner, hold a pre-aim at A. And then Capsidal can guarantee a two-piece, if not more. Oh, snippy. Number five, just don't die. Number seven, don't die. And as we see that, number seven backs up even more. Um, and just like that, now we get the kill. All these players are looking at Capsidal. That's going to allow five and seven to start uh, to start uh, basically making plays if they need to. Oh, my gosh. And at this point right now, Capsidal got a two piece. And guess what? <laughs> so Capsidal got a two piece. And then seven and five, they said, all right, these enemies must just be stuck over here. So they're probably going to try to push us out and go A because they know that Capsidal's over here. So let's just get together and go the opposite direction and get towards our teammate, um, which is just hilarious to watch. And then at this point, that should be GG's because now we have that defense set up where Capsidal can literally just watch the bomb the entire time. Number five has middle. And then we just play for the trades and we should guarantee this win. Um, even if you didn't want to like, you know, hold a pre-aim and play this together, this player could sit there and go, oh, okay, I'm going to go for a full flank. But that's kind of just doing more work than necessary. You just need to sit here and play the trades. Um, and GG's. But that ends the class for today. Do you guys have any questions or anything?